on some days you just want to stay indoors. So in this video, we are going to share our most favorite indoor activities in Prague. We are going to give you some tips and we are going to explore. Let's go. Let's first start with some longer activities. We are kicking off our list with a place we have never visited before on our channel, the National Technical Museum. I've long been postponing a visit here, I have to confess, because I have falsely assumed that it is only for people who are interested in science and technical things. I was wrong. This place will be interesting for everyone, even for people like me who think that thermodynamics is dancing in hot temperatures and sextant is something wildly inappropriate. I have a question. How do you guys think they got all these trains and planes and helicopters and cars inside of this building? The only way they could have done it is that they first brought everything here and then they built the building around it, but I know for a fact that that's not how it was. I understand flying in this, I get it. This, I also get it, the helicopter. But this, flying that, Flying that and not dying. How? You have to be very good. That one would be impossible to park in Prague nowadays. It even smells like in a lab. It brings memories from high school. Danubit, dynamite. What is more dangerous, this? This. <laughs> I think we both know the answer to this question. National Technical Museum is enormous. We have spent three hours there and we have seen only one third of all exhibits. I had to drag Batsov away from the motorbikes, otherwise we would be there till midnight. The exhibitions were pretty interactive, so it would be interesting for kids and adults who are kids at heart, like me. We also took a tour to the artificial mines that are close replicas of the actual mines in Příbram, Ostrava and Kladno. Apparently, real miners who worked there and retired said that these artificial ones really feel like their actual working places. Minus the terrible temperatures and lack of fresh air, of course. This museum also has a canteen. That means you can spend most of your day inside and not starve or have to go to a different restaurant outside. By the way, the ticket is 280 crowns per person which is money well spent considering the size of the museum and how everything is organized. I would say you will need at least three to four hours for your visit. There is a back door, you guys, mystery solved. That's how they get everything inside. Even though I'm still not sure about the trains, right? Trains are still kind of big, bigger than the door. The second place we recommend visiting is the National Museum. Czech National Museum resides in multiple buildings, so you can spend multiple days exploring it if you want to. But if you can only afford to visit one, we recommend the main historical building on the Wenceslas Square, the biggest and the most beautiful one of all. It was constructed in 19th century during the times of Czech National Revival. Obviously, the most recognizable space in this building is the staircase gallery. You might have seen it in the Mission Impossible. Also, check out this gorgeous pantheon. Stunning. Because this museum was built during the Czech National Revival, everything is decorated with frescoes of famous Czech castles and historical events, as well as busts of prolific Czechs. There are several exhibitions you can visit there. The museum also has a free app that provides a free audio guide and routes you can follow in English. Since they have a lot of new exhibitions, we thought it could be handy to check out their guides that you can find on their app. And we will try to pick a route. I thought this sounds interesting. Windows to prehistory. And here are the stops that we will look at. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So this is the map of the whole museum. And they also have the audio guide here and photos, obviously, connected to all the exhibitions with explanations. We used it and it was very educational and fun to follow, sort of like a quest. My guess you will need three to four hours for your visit, but it can be even longer than that. This museum also has a cafeteria inside, so you can grab a bite without leaving the building. The admission fee is 350 crowns and your ticket also includes the visit to the cupola, which is a nice bonus. 
Our next activity is mostly indoors. It is the visit to the Prague Jewish Museum. Mostly because the museum is situated inside of several synagogues, ceremonial hall and the old Jewish cemetery. Which means you will have to walk from one synagogue to another. And of course, the cemetery is outside. It is not a big deal in my opinion because all the museum's buildings are super close to one another. We unfortunately couldn't film inside. But your visit will include six historical buildings and the cemetery. Expect it to last at least four hours if you are planning to get a full Prague Jewish Quarter circuit. The admission fee is 550 crowns, which is the highest one on our list today. But it's totally justifiable in my opinion. Another indoor site you can spend forever exploring is the National Gallery. Again. Czech National Gallery has multiple branches. They are divided by the art types and artworks. Agnes Monastery, for example, has brutal and beautiful Gothic art. Palaces on Hračany Square have Renaissance and Baroque art mainly. We went to the main building of the National Gallery, the Trade Fair Palace in Holyshovice, an area that we explored in one of our videos. Check it out. The ticket includes multiple exhibitions. Our favorite one was the Art of the Long Century, which displays the most famous artworks works of that period. You will see Mucha, Monet, Picasso, Kupka, Shikander, and many others. The Trade Fair Palace is an enormous building. It will take you around two to four hours to see everything, depending on your pace. You can also relax in the cafe downstairs. The ticket costs 250 crowns, but the price is different for other branches. For example, Sternberg Palace is 180 crowns. Another place we have shown on our channel before, which is perfect for indoor visits, is Strahov Monastery. We have only talked about the gorgeous library of the monastery, but you can also get a ticket which will include the gallery and the monastery itself. Bear in mind that to walk around the library halls you have to order a special excursion ahead of time. My guess you will need at least two hours to see everything, which makes it a shorter indoor activity on our list. Strauf Monastery also has a brewery and a restaurant where you can enjoy Czech beer and traditional food. We made a video about which Czech dishes you should try. Moving on to other shorter indoor activities, you can head to the Old Town Hall, where you can visit the astronomical clock tower. Your ticket will also include a guided tour of the town hall interiors and the underground. Make sure to find out the time of the guided tour and sign up for it, because they only do it a couple times per day. It will take you approximately two hours to visit the Old Town Hall. Just a stone throw away from there, hiding behind the enormous teen church, is the house at the Golden Ring. There you will learn how Prague was built over centuries as as well as some curious facts about Middle Ages and the life during that time. Normally, the visit there takes one to two hours, but if you speak Czech, it will be longer because you will be chatting to all lovely older ladies who work there. We spent three hours there. The entrance fee is 180 crowns, one of the cheapest on our list. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you can probably guess our next recommendation. Prague Castle, of course. It is a must-see, regardless of the weather conditions. And we also recommend getting a ticket to the castle interiors. You will need approximately three hours to explore the four sites included in the circuit. St. Vitus Cathedral, Old Royal Palace, St. George's Basilica and the Golden Lane. Bear in mind that you will have to walk outside from one building to the other. They are not connected. Also, just FYI, if you are visiting in winter time, there is basically no heating, so bundle up. The admission fee is 250 crowns without the audio guide. Please make sure to check if there are any irregular opening hours during the time of your visit on the website of the Prague Castle, as there are often some state events that happen there. I will also remind you that we do tours to the Prague Castle. You can check them out on our website. Okay, guys, I hope you liked our today's video and we'll see you in our next one. I certainly hope that it stops raining right now.